So, Cal, let's drop down into the whispers, Chad. <coughs> Sound good? All right. So, Kelvin, your yep. character is named Varys. Varys had, um, well, let me read it out. In the Forgotten Realms, amidst the bustling cities and tranquil forests, lives you. Each, uh, well, lives adventures, each pursuing your own destinies. Little did you know that you were intertwined by a single en enigmatic dream. Each time the world around you faded into a hairy, hazy mist replaced by a dimly lit wagon, where an old woman shrouded in crimson robes stood before you. Her eyes, like twin pools of ancient wisdom, could pierce through the veil illusions and reveal hidden paths that led you to your ultimate goal. She says, every time you have this dream, she looks at you and she says, you wander aimlessly, lost in a labyrinth of your own desire. But I, Keeper of Secrets, can guide you to the path of fulfillment. In this most recent dream, she said to you, You sought out power in the solace of your monastery to redeem a mistake that you made. The quiet didn't save you from the destruction around you or from your family's hate. Come find me near Sar Pool, and I will help you gain a peace to cure the fate. Okay. So I'll whisper that to you. Do you see it in the chat? Yep. Perfect. So this has been going on for weeks. In each dream, she speaks secrets of your past, knowledge so deep that not a single other soul could know. In the final dream, she spoke thusly, seek the warlock, the barbarian, the fighter, the rogue, the druid. You will know them by their signs the bronze scales who smell of honey, the little one with fight in his eyes, the one with a fear, furry friend, and the one who has nature flow from them. You will find them in due time and understand the role you play. Seek out a man of a thousand patchwork colors and he'll show you the way. So when you awoke with the moon still high in the night, you waited for the dreams to fade from your mind. Instead, you felt visions of solidarity, clarity, and you felt a weight in your lap. And you saw a single resting playing card. Let me grab the card for you. Gonna have to go over to another page. We'll see if this works or not. Go ahead and click accept trade. All right. In your lap, you find a playing card of sorts. Immediately as you awake, you feel that weight in your lap. You hear outside your monastery a clicking of hooves with a man just within earshot calling out your name. Um, I'm awake now and able to interact with everything. Yep. All right. Well, presumably, uh, I'll stand up <clears throat> and I'll begin to walk toward the voice. Okay. As you exit the monastery, you hear uh, some huffing, some whinnying, and uh, scraping of hooves. You see a carriage, a man in a carriage, with a single black horse drawing. Let's get you a visual of what this looks like. That's exactly what it looks like, except one horse. Okay. He oh, calls... I should have said too. Like as I stand up, I want to take a look at the playing card. Do I know, do I like recognize it? You haven't seen anything quite like this before. Given your background, where you came up, it's pretty foreign. You get the idea it's a playing card, sure, but you don't really know what kind of deck it's for. Does it make much sense to you? Okay. So this man sees you walking towards the carriage, and he greets you. He says. Well, hello, Traveler. The name's Eric. Um, I've been told to come get a Varus. Told by who? Oh, in due time, young man. I'm uh, on a bit of a schedule. If you don't mind, you can hop on in and we'll be on our way. I can't just leave the monastery here. Well, I guess the choice is up to you. The letter I got that told me to come get you said that 
you had an important story to tell and important mission to accomplish. Well, I suppose that if you're um, not going to leave here, then um, I don't think that I'm going to get paid. This is uh, pretty troubling. He looks down. Well, let me... He looks down at his uh, coin purse and he, um, he he picks it up a little bit. You don't hear anything. <laughs> hmm. Well, let me see this letter of which you speak. He uh, brandishes it towards you very plainly. You see a letter which describes part of the dream that you had, saying, "Seek." The warlock, the barbarian, the fighter, the rogue, the druid. You'll know them by their signs. The uh, bronze of the scales, the little fight with its eyes. Furry friend who is nature that flows through them. And instead um, of saying, seek out the man of a thousand patchwork colors, it just ends at, you'll find them in due time and understand the role that they will play. Where were you hired to take me? Well, young man... Uh, I hail from Barovia, so that's the place that we're heading. Barovia, huh? Are are there is there someone waiting for me there? What what awaits me in Barovia? Well, um, I don't know if anyone awaits you. I got uh, I got a little bit of money, and then somebody said if I come pick up these uh, these lovely folk, that they would give me more money, and I accepted that. So you've picked up other people. Can you describe them to me? Well, you're the only one I've picked up so far, but um, these other people, uh, they sound, well, like the written letter says. Hmm. I'll kind of take a last look back at the monastery, and um, presumably I don't have much in the way of belongings, but <laughs> I no. like grab up my pack and just say, well... Give me, give me a few minutes and let me gather my things and I'll, I'll come with you after all. Perfect. As you say that, the uh, horse whinnies. He sits there, pets it, and uh, you notice different than before, a slow mist starting to creep in. Um, the weather in Darkon is, isn't pleasant, but in a port town, you don't get that much fog or mist. It's more uh, rain and sun so the fact that it's rolling in is a little peculiar as you gather your things and um, get onto the carriage it is a fairly large carriage drawn by this one very large horse and he starts clamping on the way you see the mist as it uh, starts to thicken completely envelop the carriage it by no means should be trans traversable but Eric seems to know the way you guys travel for many hours in what is almost complete darkness and all of a sudden you hear cobblestone as you are slowly arriving you see a lamplight of a single tavern he calls down to you and he says okay traveler um we are going to uh, part our ways now. You're welcome to come in and have a drink if you'd like. But I got to tend to Blackfoot and pick up some more friends. So go in there, meet some of the owners, and they'll they'll help you with the drink while I'm, I'm on my way. And that's where All we're right. going to kick back into the main chat. All righty. Okay. Yeah, AJ Eldridge site, too. Pretty good invocation. You can just cast Detect Magic at will. Okay. So, everybody, the last place that we left off, you all were, um, I wouldn't say leaving, but um, getting separated from Irina and heading towards, well, not the Burgo Man's Burgo Master's Mansion. What would you guys like to do next? Uh huh. Just from last time, were we heading to the tavern? Yeah, I think we're gonna head to the tavern and talk about. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Basically. That's right. Yeah, we were gonna plan on just 
doing some planning, I think. Sounds good. Just finishing my last piece of pizza real quick. Smart. So as you say that, do looks over to the rest of you guys and says, well, this is a lot to take in. I'm going to go ahead and tend to my uncle. I will be back with my brother shortly. Um, feel free to move on without me. I'll catch you guys there. And he starts walking off. Yeah. And he doesn't seem like you could change his mind. I'm back. <laughs> hey, let's force him. You guys want to? Let's just incapacitate Keanu's character. Let's set the tone for this campaign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not a fun You choice. miss a week, your character dies. <laughs> we go to the tavern and kill everybody. <laughs> yeah, you'd think your character would die to like enemies, but no, it's to the rest of the party. <laughs> Worst group ever. Mm. <laughs> so we haven't met Cal's character yet, right? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. <clears throat> I think we should just let's get to the tavern. I could use... Use a drink, honestly, after that fight. Oh. Yeah, I could I could use an ale. A whiskey. Whiskey. So let's do this. There should be everybody at this place. Let's set up. Oh, um. And, uh, Clagan. He falls into a black abyss. You guys don't really see where he goes. Who was that again? That was Logan. Oh. Uh, short gun? Yeah. Where'd he go? Oh. Well, I, hopefully he knows to catch up with us. <laughs> All right. Tavern. So as you guys are walking down the muddy path, you see a single lamp lighting a tavern. The sign is very old very worn but it has a little bit of red paint on a piece of wood that says red wine tavern or sorry blood and wine tavern you hear a little bit of ruckus inside but pretty much a uh, dull roar wait what do you didn't you say everything was really quiet last time yeah but now, like, as soon as we, like, get to the door of this place, we hear noise. Yeah, you hear some voices. Because we, like, we were, like, outside it last time for a while. Yeah. All yeah. we heard was just Irina just crying, whimpering. Mm -hmm. So everything else was just, like, dead silence. Exactly. Right. All right. Well, I guess I'll walk up to the... <clears throat> Can you describe the doors? Are they like the old timey Western saloon doors, or like a? We will let you figure that out. That's just what I'm imagining. So I want to just like, I'm assuming we're just gonna go up and like swing them open, lock um, in, all walk cool. in. Yeah, look all cool. Well, you guys, tell me because there's one thing I've been trying to figure out. It's 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 is if you can open doors or not. So, you um, tell me if you can open that door. There should be a door icon on the screen. Yeah, you want me to click it? Yeah, buddy, go for it. Yeah, it opened. Hey! Mm. Now we're talking. Oh, maybe I should have checked if it was locked first. Just kidding. <laughs> so... You have to call the fire department <laughs> if the door's locked during business hours. As you walk in, um, you see a fairly quaint tavern. The uh, noise that you hear is a communication coming from three Vistani women. They're olive, olive tan skin and beautiful black hair drapes over their shoulders. You see a familiar face behind the bar and a, uh, well, uh, Kel, how about you describe Varys? What does Varys look like? <clears throat> Okay, I'm not muted. Let me refresh my brain here. Um, so he's a uh, average height, about five and a half feet, average weight, 145. He's got dark skin with dark hair and green eyes. Um, you'd recognize him as a 
Oh, uh, what am I again? Half elf um, by sight. Um, looks a little shifty, but also pretty calm. And in the back, you see another group of people. Sorry, is somebody opening the door all the way over there? Uh, I was checking. It was already open. And I'm like, can I open it from here? And oh, I can't. you shifty little bitch. Um, well, it, it was already open. I just closed it and reopened it. <laughs> You're fine. I'll, I'll have to fucking remember that, though. Um, you see uh, a group of um, able-bodied people in adventuring gear. Um, they have swords, maces, things on them as well. And they're... Um, each sitting with a glass of wine in the back right or the back left corner. All right. All right. Mm. Well, <clears throat> should Kel, we belly up to the bar? Let's go. Kel, do me a quick favor. Make a. Uh, well, you don't even have to make one. After about a couple hours of being here, you noticed the same. Or you notice wafting in the air a honey-like smell you see a small man walking in with a mouse on his shoulder and a woman walking in which almost has the grass and vines from outside following her okay um that's us by the way in case you didn't figure that out. Oh, and I, I recognize them from my dream. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm kind of just going to keep an eye on them. It's been a while since I've been out in public, so I'm just going to kind of sit back and watch for a minute. Okay. Perfect. So I think, are all three of us approaching the bar then? Fira, is Fira coming too? Yes. I'm coming. Okay. I'm just going to move all the way up to the bar here. Oh, I see a... One more spell oh okay see if you play a barbarian your char your character sheet's way easier to set up <laughs> wait till we level up and you unlock access because as a druid too i mean you just get all the druid spells of that level yeah. you just have, you just have to choose which ones you prepare as i level you... up i just have to add like two things and an extra attack or whatever <laughs> as you walk up to the bar you notice eric standing behind it he calls out to you guys and he says, Oh, welcome. Welcome. I really didn't uh, expect you back here so soon. Well, uh, it's, it's nice to see all y'all. Yeah, well, it's a, a pleasure to, to enter this fine establishment. Well, well what do they serve in here? Hopefully the blood and the wine are separate. <laughs> On uh, good days they are, sir. Good days they are. Let me do this for you, though. I'll get you a glass of our best wine on the house. It's um, probably one of our last ones. We haven't had a delivery in a long time, so. He uh, pours you a glass of wine. This glass of wine is a... Have you ever, like, put red food coloring in water? Uh, uh Sure. It looks like it's supposed to be dark, but it's completely translucent. Oh, okay. So it's not, it's red, but it's not yes. like. It's not a full body wine. Yeah. He gives like it it's, to it's you. clear, that's the word. Yeah. It, it's yeah. very Not colorless, but clear. Exactly. He hands it over to you <clears> in uh, some chipped glasses and he says, uh, well, um, I suppose you guys heard about uh, Irina then. Oh yeah, we heard. We just talking with her and her, her brother. Yeah, those those guys are uh, they're going through a lot. They're going through a lot. Do you trust her? Well, uh, did her brother say what's been going on with her? Just that we should help we should well, bring her with uh, us uh, scooch on in here he leans up on the bar with his his uh, elbows on it Irene has uh, been in trouble before 
she wears that red scarf around her neck to, to hide what's happened, but she's been uh, intermixed with the vampire at one point in time. You can see the marks on her neck. Seems like wolves follow her into the village from miles around. She's a little bit of a magnet for uh, misfortune, misdeeds, and I don't think her brother, uh, Mr. Lesser, can help anymore. Can I roll mm -hmm. insight to see if he's like mm -hmm. hiding? If he seems like he's hiding more information or has something he's not telling us? Does anybody else want to try that? Uh, okay. Well, I absolutely want to be trying to eavesdrop on this entire thing. So just give me um, both of you guys choose if you want to give advantage or take the highest. Okay, never mind. That's fine. Um, uh, Sarah, give me a roll. And then Cal, give me a perception check. See if you can hear this conversation. Sarah, send your role to GM instead of public, too. Mm. To GM. Yeah. Yeah, for, for the inside. I just read the rules. It says all the insights against NPCs are it's supposed to be whispered. Insight, it, did you say insight or something else? or Just um, insight rolls on NPCs. So, uh, Vera, you don't... Can't really tell either which way. Um, Corn, you feel like he's being very sincere almost almost that his voice coming from him is um uh belittling in a way like uh almost uh saddened or miserable like this this is truly something that's happening and with all much how much death is in this town it probably is not gonna make a difference um, Calvin, or sorry, Varys, as you're listening in to these different people coming up to this bar, you hear Eric telling of Irina, of a woman who had truly misfortunate occurrences. You also hear a group in the back corner chattering lightly about being stuck here in trying to figure out a way to leave. That's the uh, gorillas looking group over there? Yeah. Also, I'm not seeing the toggle for send a GM on my sheet. It's supposed to just be right at the top, isn't it? Go to your settings. Add it. Yeah, go to your uh, settings and find it there. It's not there, but... Dude, they changed so much stuff on here since just like a couple weeks ago. I know. They, they just keep updating it, which is great. Okay. Uh, AJ, what uh, gold do we start with? I I don't have any money. <laughs> oh. Uh, we pull. Oh yeah, AJ start didn't with... have us do starting yeah. money. Everybody starts with five gold. How about okay. that? Okay. Yeah, I have eight on my a... character sheet. I thought we were uh... having a bank. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Aaron was going to be the bank banker, right, yep. but I didn't. I don't think we transferred any gold to no. him yet. Aaron, no, I... just start out with seventy gold. Sorry, uh, forty-five. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think usually your starting money comes from your background. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, it's negligible. It's usually like the difference between ten and twenty gold, which in this yeah. this setting isn't going to be that much. If you're like um, a noble, it's like the only time you actually have money. Yeah. Um, Eric looks over towards the guys and he says, but, you know, that's just uh, my opinion of some rumors, some shadows, and uh, being uh, slinging drinks for way too long. Yes, working in the tavern, you hear a lot of rumors. Yep. Do you guys have any, do you have any mead? Um... We might have some. I can't say it's the best. Um, my uh, owner's over there, and he points to the three women sitting at the table. Uh, they, uh, they're they the ones who uh, procure all this, and um, they get it from different places around around Barovia. They're, they're lucky oh. enough to uh, be like me, where we can head out and, and pick some stuff up, but it just doesn't happen too often. We got a business to run here, so... Um, he, he walks in the back, and as he does, you guys um, 
hear a group over on the left. One of them starts to walk up to you. Howdy oh. there. I uh, heard you guys uh, talking. Um, are you new here as well? Yeah, we just got here. Uh, the name's Sylvain. Uh, my group and I, we, we're we not from here. We got trapped here. Um, you guys uh, know, know how to get out? We, we didn't even know we were... We were stuck until they told us when we first got here. So yeah. we, have, we haven't even tried leaving. I heard people can't really leave once they're here, unless they're like, uh, you know, Eric. Well, my friend Aria over there, and he, she points to the, uh, the very large um, orcish woman. Uh, she ended up trying to go into the mists three or four times, and uh, her eyes are bleeding, her mouth is bleeding as she walked back. It's been a long, long day. When did you guys get here? Well, we got here um, sometime a couple weeks ago. We've been around Barovia, um, came down from Velaki. Um, we, we don't really know where to go. We just want to find a way to get out of here. We think we're going to start heading south next. Well, how long have you been here? A uh, couple yeah. weeks. Well, wish you the best of luck, but no, we just got here. I don't think any of us would really know anything about leaving. Or we're not trying to right now, so. She takes one hand and she drags it through her white hair as she does um she starts to like lose a little bit of the uh, strength she had in her shoulders and she slumps a little bit her posture starts falling back to more of a relaxed yeah. position she looks over at you guys she says well if um if you hear any way that uh, maybe we could get back home to our families let us know all right yeah same if you hear anything successful. Oh, absolutely, we will. She walks back. As she does, Eric comes out, and in his hand he has uh, a wooden, what do you call it, stein? A wooden stein of mead. He says, uh, that'll be uh, one gold piece there, sir. Stuff one is, uh, yeah, one. stuff's really, really hard to come by. Sorry to uh, charge you so much, but the bosses are watching. He points over at the three women. All right. I guess one gold piece. Yep, I subtracted it. Got it. Does it uh? Does the meat look normal, or does it seem like it's kind of watered down too? Um. I'll, I'll it looks no, no. It looks I... perfect. Honestly, you take a drink of it, and it's um. It's very, very standard to what you're used to. It's quite good. Yeah, the stuff that uh, doesn't grow here in Barovia is, is quite good. But um, that uh, the wine that I gave you is uh, is probably the best out of the three we've been growing here out of the, um, well, out of the winery. It's hard to grow things without sun. Yeah, funny thing you mentioned that. It's uh, terribly difficult, but the land's been blessed for many years. It um, still keeps sprouting, but um, lately the shipments have slowed down. It's uh, it's a bit hard to come by. All right, I want to drink some of my wine. What does it taste like? Um, it as you put it to your lips, you feel a a breath of fruit but then a bite of alcohol. So almost like the pinching sensation that you would have from a stronger spirit. Very and... ethanol -y. Yes. Um, but you notice there's texture where there shouldn't be, like silt, um, a bad filtering system. So you're like biting into a little bit of a seed from a grape. Um, 
it's it's funny to you that this is the best. Yeah. I wanna down it all and then just <laughs> set the cup down and be like Delicious. Oh I'm right I'm mighty mighty glad that you like that so much. Yeah, it was quite good. I and I really love the that there were little bits of, of plant in it. You know, normal wines that, that we get outside just you know, they're just too 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 thin and uniform, you know. Well, my friend, uh, that's a bit of the Barovia charm, I suppose. Um, I suppose that uh, if you like it, there's more than more of that where it came from. Oh, I thought you said you were almost out. Well, yeah, we got a few barrels left. Um, by our standards, we got a lot of people to to serve to, so it's it's getting close. Beer? Are you gonna have a drink? No, I'm I'm okay. I more of a eating the whole food kind of person. If I want some wine. I'll just eat a grape. Green. I'll ferment it in my stomach. I I don't need I don't need a drink. I uh, I've heard of that. I think that's called the 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 brewer's stomach. I just, I, I like, you know, if, if you have a grape, I'll, I'll eat some grapes. Um, it'd be great, but I don't, I don't need, I don't need any beer. Water's nice, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'd be kind of scared to see what the grapes from this place. Yeah. yeah. Well, I need the food, really. I mean, do you have food here? Eric's uh, sitting there uh, wiping a glass. You hear this, the the squeak of the rag against it. Well, uh, my friends, I could make some food, but it would not be very good. Usually, people here they uh, they don't really eat here. It's more of a drinking establishment. If you, if you have any flowers, I can help bloom them. Like they all flowers bloom in my present. It's really great. Uh. My friend, I haven't seen a flower in Barovia, well, the village at least, in many years. It's gonna be hard. I don't know if I can live without without seeing flowers. Well, you could check out uh, Krasak. That place has got some some actual light. Um, it's very strange out there, but uh, I want to go there. I. I like flowers and, and plants and light. I feel like how how do you live without plants and flowers and light? I don't I don't understand. They're, yeah. They're doing it. I was gonna no. say Not very well, but <laughs> my my skin's pretty light here. We uh we don't get much sun. Your body gets used to it, your heart gets used to it. I don't know if my heart can get used to that, but I'll, I'll try. I mean, if you see any flowers, let me know. I'd like to bloom them, please. I I will keep that top of my mind, young woman. Uh, if I find them, you will bloom them. He has this really giant smile. I smile back. You know, I'm I... my grapes, but... Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but notice that you said the, the owners were over there, and we happened to meet this this group of new arrivals over here at this other table, but who's that fella sitting by himself? Uh, that one down there is uh, one that I picked up in the carriage, similar to the rest of yous. I thought you uh, knew him by chance. Wait, was he there the same time as us? He was not. He's been okay. here ever since he walked in. No, I, I haven't I, met him. As I Maybe. hear this, I'm yeah. kind of like making sure it's not obvious that I'm looking their way and just kind of, okay, you know, it's like, no, I wasn't looking. Don't fuck it up. Give me a uh, stealth check. And, uh, 
on on my part, I want to be completely oblivious, even if he botches this thing. He's, uh, just, I was he's, just, say, he's just dead eyeing us. <laughs> it is the Bug-eyed. equivalent. It is the equivalent of like a middle school crush, where somebody says, "Oh, you like Emily," and then you're looking over at Emily. She sees you looking, but then tries to like play it off as you're like spacing out beyond the vision. Wait, um, who did we go to middle school with named Emily? I don't know a single Emily <laughs> from middle school, buddy. <laughs> I don't know if I know anyone named Emily. I know Emily. Oh shit! I can't say that name. Edit that out. Um. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we'll we'll clean it up in post. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling that's gonna happen a lot. <laughs> I literally have streaming timestamps for this reason alone. <clears throat> okay. That's it. Um, Peace. So how do you do? Do we notice him paying attention to us? Yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, he tried to make it look not obvious and didn't do that well. <laughs> he seems to be interested in us, so I think maybe we should go over and talk to him. He might have some information for us. Or if he's yeah. similar to us, then maybe, maybe we're supposed to talk to him. Cornelius just starts walking over. He's like, hey there, pal. Well, I can't uh, help but notice hello. you're alone. Uh, yes, yes, I uh, I just arrived here today, and, well, I'm afraid I don't really know anyone here. I'd be afraid to know anyone here, right? <laughs> Seems like a, like a, a scary kind of place. Yeah, I... I can't really say that I've seen much of the town. Um, uh, the bartender there gave me a ride and brought me straight here, so this is about all of Barovia that I've seen. This is Barovia, right? Yes, it is. That's what they told well, us. That's good, at least. Uh, I suppose he took me where he said he was going to. I guess that's a mark in his favor. Um, how, how may I help you? We were just oh. curious, because he said you were kind of picked up and brought here on the same circumstances that we were. Do you oh. happen to have a dream? A dream, you say? Um, could you be a little bit more specific? I, I dream quite frequently, you see. Well, it would be a dream that said a traveler is going to pick up some strangers and bring them here, I guess. I I did not have such a dream. Um, not in as many words, no. Um, but it does strike me as a little familiar, as I think I may have been on the opposite end of a similar dream, where uh, one that told me I would travel and I would meet people meeting your description which uh, I'm sure, you know, I didn't mean to cause you alarm. I was studying you a little bit to make sure that you were the ones that uh, I was supposed to meet. Yeah, well, we were missing. Come here, we're just missing one, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. One of our companions, I'm not quite sure what happened to him. Hopefully he joins up. Again later, but yeah, it was four of us total that were brought here. Interesting. Uh, um, why? Why were you brought here? I, I all I know is that I have a deep instinct to to seek you out, um, but I I don't know for what reason. Yeah, I think we're all. Idea. I'm. I we haven't really discussed it amongst ourselves. We're just. We just got here, and we don't know a lot, but your dream sounds very familiar to the one that I had, and that same instinct to just get on that cart. I'm well. I'm Pyre, by the way. Pyre, nice to meet you. My name is Varus. Varus. I go by Cornelius, but you can call me Corny. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure meeting you all. Um, 
I hope if, if there's nothing, are you sure there was nothing more to your dream? There was, but I don't know what it means. Yeah, well, it was a little personal, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Just Maybe not, if... at that, not at that comfort quite yet with it. Maybe if we uh, all stick together, we'll we'll be able to figure out the meaning of these dreams. I think as a group, we would have a better chance trying to figure it out separately. Yes, well, it is it is a bit odd to say such private thoughts out loud, but uh, I do agree with you. And um, if I if I might suggest, uh, I I heard that other groups say they were struggling to leave. What were they talking about? Leave this tavern or the town? I think just leave, go where they want to go. I don't think people can like go where they like go home. I don't know how big this place that we're in is, but I don't think they can go home. They well, said you've, you've they tried been to leave here Barovia. for some time, haven't you? Yeah, we, we've been here about an hour and a half. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. So you're recent arrivals as well. Yep. yep. I'm, I'm getting a little nervous about these people who can't leave. I just, I guess I'm confused. What's, like, why can't they leave? I'm, well, they, what's this mist? I'm so I'm so confused. They said they tried to, and then they were bleeding from their eyes and their mouth. So obviously, it's not. Like a, you, they said the mist is so thick, you get lost in it. And... Maybe uh, we can well, learn more from some people who can leave. I think Eric it, said the the owners sitting at that table over there. Those <clears throat> that group of women might be able to. Uh, also leave just like him that's a, a wise idea new friend also i mean i i, I don't mean... think it's wise to be wandering into the mist in a area you don't know um but i i'm i'm one who be won't believe something until i see it for myself so i mean while i think it's wise to speak to someone who's left the town i say maybe we should just give it a shot yeah, I if, am if, all for just like going. Yeah, if, if I, we. I'm, get, I'm getting really creepy vibes from this, if I'm being honest. There's no flowers, there's no light, they don't have grapes. I'm just. I don't know. Well, I just kind of want to go home. We got to fig figure out if we're going to be helping out Irene, well, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we encounter the mists. You guys try to go through them and let me know how it works out. Yeah, I'm not all for bleeding from my mouth. Yeah, I, I only bleed from my from from my mouth if if I like bit my lip or 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 somebody hit me really hard. So I don't know about you guys. Okay. Uh, so no, uh, really that's highly that's highly offensive. I am a dragonborn. There might be able to be dragonborn vampires. I don't know. I don't know all your jazz. I haven't met too many vampires, if I'm gonna be honest. I do like jazz. <laughs> it's jazz oh, now a thing? I don't know. She just said jazz, dude. <laughs> Is music not a thing? I mean, music. Yeah, sure, music's a thing. The jazz just, does not. <laughs> we're trying to <laughs> compile you the saying... list of things that you're trying to create. It's <laughs> messing with you, age. I mean, isn't Louis? I mean, Texas is a thing. Wouldn't Louisiana and jazz music and stuff? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Barovia is right Texas underneath, jazz. right underneath Louisiana, guys. Yeah, <laughs> that, uh, that actually makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, yeah it kind of does. The buzzers, you said there's a lot of mists. That sounds like swampy. Well, yep. the bayou is actually full of a lot of like I... animals. I kind of assume this was like Eastern Europe, you know, there's all yeah. these. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm getting a very much a Romania. There's all these Vistani, Gypsy, I mean, Vistani. <laughs> there's, a... there's another time marker. I was uh, going to so say. There's all these, all these Romani. Oh, can't say that either. The, um, the, the reason thing. that Wizards needs to reprint the book. <clears throat> so as you guys are chatting... Uh, Eric looks over at you and he says, well, um, I'm going to ask everybody to uh, head out. I'm going to pay my respects to uh, Kol Kolyan. 
will uh, see you guys shortly if you don't mind passing me your glasses, uh, taking a last sip. Oh, yeah, I, I left mine over there on the on the counter, and there shouldn't be a drop left. He looks not a drop. Almost like it's been like cleaned. Looks perfect. Yeah, it's cleaner than it was when he handed it to me. <laughs> <laughs> like the Nuts alcohol it. burned off all the germs. You, you ain't wrong. All right, I'll. Tyre's gonna quickly drink his mead and kind of shudders a little bit. You can... If you were looking at him, you can tell he's not used to drinking that much alcohol in one sitting. But he's a sipper. And then he'll place it on the bar. He walks over towards the uh, towards the other group and as he's talking to them, the uh, the owners uh, call up to you and they say, uh, Hey, welcome to Barovia. It's so nice to see you. Is that to all of us? Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's a nice establishment you have here. The one at the head of the table closest to you is chatting. She says, yes, we try to keep it very nice for for all of our patrons. The name's uh, Lenka. Lenka? I'm Pyre. Nice to meet you, Pyre. And, um, Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Fira. Hey, Fira. It's so nice to meet you. I can, um... Say I'm very jealous. All your guys' skin is so touched by the sun. We, I'm just um... gonna look at his look at his pale skin and be like, really? Cornelius looks down and he's just surprised that she said he has skin. <laughs> she says, I, mean, I, uh... I, don't, "I don't think they're very." Uh... My fur. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think the link the link is really observant. <laughs> I think so. Look as from green fur. As she's looking at you, she'll she'll say, uh, most of the other patrons that come in here, they're well, they're a bit blue. I haven't seen the sun in many years. We were um just playing a little game. Do you think you guys would want to wager a coin or two? Try to test your luck. Sure, it's... why not? No, oh, wait, 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 wait. Cornelius is skeptical. It's not me, baby. I'm going. <laughs> it's uh, called witch dice. I'm sure you've all played it before. I think I'm okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll watch you guys play it. I, yeah. uh, you know, always. I've got some experience with some games, and I, I like being a spectator more. I've found myself in some some bad situations in the past, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna just watch like really carefully to see what's going. On. You know. So we or... got one. I'll, Do we have two? I'll give it, I'll give it a shot. Why not? Okay. Do we have three? Come on, you could get a free AJ, drink out Cornelius of it. Cornelius is very skeptical that they're gonna that the house always wins, and he wants to really. Just stay out of it and examine what they're doing. Okay. See if he can figure out the trick. If there is a trick. Same with Fira. She's gonna really be watching. So you guys give me two, um... Give me two... Perception rolls. Just to you? I, it doesn't matter. Okay, Cornelius closes an eye. And then with just one <laughs> eye open, he's trying to get it. Okay. So the rules are this. We start with high and we get to low. I have this D8 dice. I'm going to take it. I'm going to roll it. And I'm going to cover it up. After I cover it up, I know what number I have. And I'm going to bet at how much I'm going to win. Then I'm going to roll a D6 and do the same thing. With the final roll... No bets on the table. We'll roll a d4. Whoever has the highest, well, they take home the cake. In this case, 
It'll be a glass of wine or maybe even something better. Everybody ready? Ready. Give it a shot. So if you would like, instead of showing the people around you what you would like to bet, you can whisper it to me. Otherwise, you can roll a dice or uh, send it to the open chat. It's up to you. And presumably I haven't joined in with their bank yet, so I just have my own gold. You have uh, about five gold. I thought I just added the gold for everybody to my thing. Yeah, we'll say Cal has another five. Go flex. Okay. Forgot the conversion. How many silver to gold again? Um, it's a. I think it's a ten to one every way. Ten copper to a okay. silver. Ten silver. Um, okay. And they're starting out with the gold. That's the buy-in. Oh, is it a, a gold? <clears throat> so. So do you want to know like additional betting or just? They, they start out with the gold. So everybody, okay. Annie up one gold piece. That way we know you're serious. All right, I throw one down immediately. Okay. Yep, I'll slide it along. Okay. As you do, uh, they, uh, the two sisters are just shaking their heads. The one sits and she reaches into a heavy coin purse, drops it on the table, and flicks over a single coin. You hear the spinning, the clatter, and the drop. Okay, everybody, roll that dice. And you hear it roll. She looks at uh, D8. D8. She looks at the dice in front of her and she smiles. She says, Ooh, I think I'm going to put, let's put five silver on this one. She puts down five silver pieces on the table. Wait, can you run back through the rules real quick? So there are three rolls. Yep. The first two rolls you can bet on. It's a D8, D6, D4. Whoever is the highest what? wins. Got highest it. total at the end. Yep. You roll the D4, okay. D4 blind. And they're rolling dice? Yes. Which dice? Which dice, yes. <laughs> um, and what did, the, what did the lady we're playing against, Zelenka, roll? Um, she rolled a D8, but I'm not going to tell you. Like, uh, these are all hidden. She covers okay. up the dice and says, Ooh, I got something good. Insight? Give me an insight roll. Yeah, I'll do that as well. I love it. Uh, she is lying. Like, obviously. Okay, uh, I'll drop down. Are we taking turns in any particular order? Or... Go for it. Uh, I'll drop down an additional gold piece. Oh, well. I sent you my bet, but I'm going to up you, it a little bit. You got to raise, yeah, you got to meet it. So um, she's reaching in her coin purse, and she pulls out another five silver that brings it up to a gold. Damn, I'm going to have, have to get out a calculator. Do we have to match everybody's bets? Yeah, you got to. Okay. So that's four gold plus three more. Oh, well, if we weren't poor, we're going to be poor. Yep. Or better off. Okay, everybody ready? Is that all the bets? That's yep. all. She takes a d6 and rolls it. Ooh, another good one. Insight? <laughs> yeah, roll an insight roll. You, um, Cal, you can't really tell. And, uh, Pyre, neither can you. Um, how about another five silver? Five silver. Yeah. She takes a pinch of silver out of her uh, pouch and puts in the middle. Is that all the bets? Oh, I'll match. Awesome. So, eight and a half gold pieces lie in the center. Okay. 
Here's the moment of truth, everybody. Now, everybody take your hands away and roll the roll that last dice. As you see the ro the final dice roll, she has a total of six. Who am I feeling? Both of you guys are doing much better than me. Who Who's getting the gold out of this pot? Oh, we just that looks like my new friend here. <clears throat> so it's you, pale one. Well, huh? I suppose you can f fix that furry little thing on your shoulder. A nice little snack. She gives you nine gold pieces. Add it to the bank. Okay. Well, I guess that's it for me tonight. I don't want to anger my sisters more than I already have. So but... minus the one he put in? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um, minus, it would be pff, minus fine, three. Gotta... Um, yep. She says, now I want you guys to come back here and spend it all on drinks. Because, well, we're the only establishment in town. Yeah, we get a chance. Oh, you'll get a chance. People here are so uh, over the top about how dangerous it is and ridiculous about the devil. I mean, Strahd isn't... Oh, you haven't even heard. Oh, you've Strahd? only been no. here for a couple days. No, like an hour. Two. Oh, I'm glad that we're one of your first stops. Yeah, you'll learn all about it. Don't you worry. Can we get like a handbook, or, like a welcoming guide that you can provide us? Yeah, there's like a like a travel welcome. Oh, for sure. Welcome you to Barovia. You guys are so funny. If we handed those out to everybody who steps foot in here, we'd run out by the afternoon. You see, you don't have a group going around and collecting from the dead bodies. People don't last here. You gotta understand that. Does she look vampirish to me? Uh, I might have to take this part out of the timestamps. Um, you don't know exactly what a vampire looks like. You understand through lore in uh, just fairy tales, but she looks like a normal woman. Does she look pale? No. Her skin is sun-touched. She's That's olive pretty skin. sus. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, touch, there's no sun here. Uh, yeah, so through the lore, you guys um, kind of realize Vistani can leave. Yeah, Eric like left. how often? Eric left. These guys left. So what, when was the last time you all left through the mists? Um, well, we leave about once a week to go get provisions, travel around the, well, the Sword Coast, and come all back around. Maybe we can join you on your next, um, next go, go around? <laughs> Honey, we've tried this before. You all, you just bleed so much. We get in the caravan, and then the, the mist, they take you back. But what if, what if I get rid of all my blood before I go through the mess? You could try that. Let me watch, though. Mm -hmm. I want to see if it works. It'd be very interesting. Okay, that was a test. That's an odd thing for you to say. It's been, I don't know, 40, 50 years that I've been alive. And all right. Does I don't... she look 40 years old? Let me... Yeah, she does. Okay. Um, I haven't ever seen it, but you can give it a shot. It's just a bad hand that you've been dealt ending up here. Do you know why we ended up here? Like, wh why are people coming here? I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> the mists have their own intention, sweetheart. They take you, and they have a little fun, but they don't often give you back. The mists always been here? For as long as we can remember. Well, since Strahd's been here. 
Wait, who's Strahd? I keep saying his name. You've... Yeah, you're so... so... She laughs. Her face is really lit up. The other two are just conversing with each other. And she says, well, Strahd von Zarevich, obviously. The ruler of Barovia. How do we meet him? Well, you can go to his castle, but might be a little bold. He, he doesn't he doesn't take guests. Well, he does, but um, if you're Vistani, he's very pleasant. If you're not, um, let's just say he doesn't ever seem to seem to have a, a leaving party. Just you'll you'll figure out soon. Is there a way to become Vistani? Uh, sorry. It's a deck of cards. You're you're shuffled the wrong hand. Speaking of a, a deck of cards, and I'll I'll hold the card I have out to her. Do you recognize this? Oh, you've met the fortune teller. I see. Yeah, that the looks like teller. from. You've met Madame Ava, right? Uh, yeah, I, totally. I do not know her name, here. but. Can you describe her so I can confirm? Yeah, both of you guys roll a deception check for me really quick. Can I roll one too? Um, what are you trying are you to deceive on them? What are you am trying, I trying to... to deceive them though? I'm just trying to ask I am. to describe her. So, okay, I don't know this okay. woman's name. I'm trying to pass it off like I've met her. Okay, so... I'm, I'm just going to nod along with, with okay. Corny. Let's put it this way. Lenka doesn't see Pyre's uh, response more of a pleasantry. Um, Varys, um, she kind of feels like you're lying, but she doesn't know about what. Um, Corny thinks you're telling the truth. Wait, am I in, am I unintentionally lying? Did the did I get a name in that dream? You did not. Okay. Well, she's a little bit older than me, but um, she's a small, short woman. Always has these wild, crazy stories and tells a fortune for a silver if if you want to hear those fairy tales. Is she so also of Astani? I wanted to find her. What was that, young? Where would, I, where would I go if I wanted to find her? To uh, the Sarah Pool. Sarah Pool? Yes. Uh, T-S-A-R Pool. Is that like a public pool? Uh, <laughs> it's um a little bit of a, a, a lake on River Ildris. Point me in the, the direction or give a map? Well, just... Take the old Savalik Road and head west. It'll be one of the first places you come across. As she's talking, you hear some feet, or well, footsteps come up outside. And a man opens the door. Okay. What's he look like? I've seen him before. Is Mark walks in. And he says, well, okay, everybody. Uh, father's um, ceremony is about to begin. Eric is um, pushing people out. The other group of adventurers are heading out as well. And the three women look over at Eric and say, oh, sweetheart, you go see off your friend. We'll, we'll take care of this for now. And they sit and they say to you, Oh, it was such a lovely evening. And uh, do come back now. I mean to get that gold back. We can always play another game of Witch Dice. Until next time. Until next time, my friend. All right. Eric looks over at you guys, he says, Well, hey, if you ever need a place to stay in Barovia, 
people in the village. You just come here. You've <laughs> you earned yourself a room or two. Give it to you at a discount. Oh, what time? Do you know what time it is right now? It Dude. is getting towards like 8 or 9 p.m. They have a 12-hour clock here because that's the way it works. Um, I just made it up, so it's real. Um, it's it's getting towards nighttime. Your guys' bodies feel a little bit tired, but it's not like midnight or anything. I mean, could we get a room? Well, it's like, time for the night? funeral. Well, yeah. Is Mark has already um, started walking away. Okay. Never mind. Uh, Eric looks over at you and he says, Vera, yeah, we can set you up for room tonight. Is it just okay. going to be the two? Just the two? Are you guys going to take separate rooms? Uh, uh, well, your, if your you friend... don't mind, I'd, I'd appreciate my own room if you don't mind. I like communal sleeping. I can cuddle. That's fine. Okay. So we got three rooms. How, how big are the beds? And he looks at your group. Um, <laughs> it's going to be tight. Um, I don't mind the floor. Yeah, I, I, don't, I can take even a bathtub, whatever. Oh, do you <laughs> have baths here? Uh, no, there's, uh, there's <laughs> no bath here. We got, we got some, some beds. Um, you can absolutely sleep on the floor, but um, just don't go behind the bar. That's where I sleep most days. So he motions to a door behind the bar, being very clear on that. It's not just, he says, well, you see, friends, it's not just behind the bar. There's a door and a room. Just just don't go knocking. What if? Deception or attack. <laughs> <laughs> Perception, you see it. It's a fucking door. <laughs> what, if, well, what if I hear the bed a rocking? Oh my god. Then can I come a knocking? Uh, it's it's take, quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> you take 1d4 psychic damage for that joke. Everybody okay. who heard it, or just me for saying it? You, just you, buddy. Okay. But what's the implication? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, um,. Eric is pushing you guys out the door politely. As it's happening, he's uh, uh, looking over to the owners and uh, chatting with them a little bit. And then, as you guys are all safely outside, he um, gives a final wave and you hear a lock. The other group of adventurers have gone away. And it is just you guys in here. Well, all right, yeah, we're this funeral. Head no, Ferris, you should come with us. Oh, I thought this was the end. Yeah, we're leaving the end. They're kicking us out. Oh, I thought we we're okay. All right. Wait, how do these doors? Oh, okay, I have to click the door. Look at that. All right, this is fancy. Yeah, Dad. Okay, let's. I'm going to move you for one second, Varys. There is a teacup that is very important. So, as you guys walk between the funeral, well, walk between... Jesus, I just need to keep you guys in all one spot. So I'm moving around so much. Um, as you guys walk and head towards the graveyard, it is dead silent again. The other group of adventurers have all but vanished you don't see them anymore and okay. to you it is just uh quiet i want everybody to make a perception check for me really quick Um, Aaron Kell, and that's it. You guys see a single raven fly and stand 
over on one of the fences outside the cemetery. It's standing on the fence post and watching you. Very peculiarly, it has a single wingtip that has a blue shade on it. For the both of you, Pyre and Fira, you walk, you see them turn their heads, don't notice anything. Cornelius mutters under his breath, uh, goofy birds here in Barovia. What do you mean? Oh, oh, sorry, I was just talking to myself. Um, do I recognize that from anywhere, like a book or any of my studies? Like any particular mention of a bird that meets that description? Give me a history check. It's gonna be really hard though. Yeah. You don't uh you don't think you have. Huh. And I'll kinda keep walking along. So, as you guys are walking along, you see a very quaint cemetery. You see a couple plots, some different headstones, and you see a, uh, let's say, a, a pair of friendly face faces that you guys have seen before. Irene is still standing there, a little bit more put together than she was before, is Mark as well. And next to them is another man, and some other Barovians. The other Barovians look very different than the Vistani did that you saw in the house. Well, not in the house, in the tavern. In what way? Their skin is blue. Oh, like literally blue? Oh. Ah. They are simply standing there, not talking not moving, just staring. Can I take a good look at the red scarf uh, that Irina is wearing and like really like look, you know? Yeah. What are you looking for? For signs of vampire activity, signs of just weirdness overall on her, on her neck. Okay. I just want to make sure you were trying like not to figure out where the scarf was made from to get your own and like <laughs> Um, make a perception check. I can never find this stuff. Perception. My goodness. You're fine. Mike. Yeah, um, you can't tell much from what you're looking at. But what you do notice is that it's tightly secured around her neck. It's definitely seasonably chilly, but with what she's wearing, she might be a little warm. Is anyone else wearing a scarf? No. Is anyone else wearing anything red? Um, no. The Brovian's clothes are beige brown. Ismark himself is wearing very simple clothing. He's basically adorned a leather, uh, uh, bit of leather. That's it. The man behind them, as well, dressed up a little bit, but nobody else is wearing red. Nobody else has um, anything but black hair. Everybody else is very similar. Uh, are they, are all Barovians, like, like in the picture, like, of different, like, they have different... Uh, races and... Yeah, so, let me pause the RP for a second. So, basically, whenever I describe this, there are going to be other kinds of people, but Curse of Strahd and Wizards wasn't smart enough to do it. Does that help? Yep, got it. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, as you guys are sitting there, 
<laughs> Irina and Ismark look over to you. They say, um, so, thanks for, um, being here, I suppose. Is that okay? We, we can leave if it's inappropriate. We just didn't know. Ismark gives you a look. No, no, no. Um, it's fine. It's fine that you're here. We, we really want you here. Uh, in, insight? Like, what kind of look was this? Was it like a... Sure, give an insight like look. A, also, just to jut in for a second, I don't know if I missed it when I was taking notes, but what the hell are we doing here? Do you, these guys know each other? Like, I'm at a loss. So I'm just kind of like hanging back. Or, oh, a funeral for what? We agreed to for take who? his sister. Yeah, oh, they're, they're dead. The of, of this place. Is oh, Mark okay. and Irina's dead? Yeah. So the, the brother and sister, we had... When we were dropped off here, we heard Irina crying, so we went over, and their father had been, like, attacked and killed. And Irina was very upset. Ismark was worried about her safety, just because of, like, all the happenings with her. So, um, we talked with, uh, Ismark, right? Yeah. So, um, and I told him that we, we might be willing to help. We didn't give him a definitive, yeah, we're gonna help keep his sister safe, but he's trying to, like, convince us to, like, get his sister, like, away from here. So, that's okay. why I went to the so, funeral. I think Ismark wants, like, invited us, I believe, or said he would need to something, so. Okay, so I'm just assuming you guys told me all this as we were walking into the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Anyways, we're going to this creepy funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Fira, as you... Uh, look, or er, yeah, wait. Who rolled the inside? Oh, me. Fira. That was you. As you look towards him, he's not trying to hide it, but he's a step back from uh, Irina. Um, he's desperate. Like is Marquez? Yeah. I think he's from like a, you know, okay. like a little. He his face untenses a little bit. Um, and Irina says, Well, I'm sorry about earlier. I wasn't like myself. I'm usually not so weepy. Um, I'm very glad that all of you uh, are here. Yeah. Do you, do you need us to say a few words? Well, if you wouldn't mind, I don't think you've ever met him, but if you have a kind one to say, I wouldn't mind it right now. Sure. I'm like Cornelius, red, even though I'm green. Cornelius <laughs> steps up, um, and he starts. Uh, you see him kind of puff, puff himself up a little bit. Seems like he's no stranger to being in front of a crowd. And he says, uh, "I'm just gonna roll this here, just to see how this is gonna go." Ooh! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Awesome. So tell me what you want Actually, to do. Actually, I would prefer that. Tell me what you want to do. I was going to stand up and just be like, and have Cornelius was going to say, he was just going to say some words and, and try to look, you know, kind and forgiving. So um, let's let's describe the he, scene. He was going to, yeah. yeah let's, let's describe the scene a little bit more. The grave is recently tilled soil at this point. And they are standing over with flowers which yep you know you haven't seen any of placed at the foot of it do they start to bloom when when sarah came they're cut flowers when fira came by they're very um they were wilted right because they're cut they almost had life given back to them they started firming up changing color a little bit getting brighter um corny you kind of biffed it when you stood up, you stepped over your own tail, and you kind of put a foot into the fresh tilled soil. So, like, your yeah. foot didn't he, hit person, yeah. but it, it it it's bad. Yeah. He, he pulls his foot out and just kind of shakes it off and says, oh, well, you know, I esteemed men and women of, of Barovia. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, um, 
Oh, I just I, I just wanted to to say a few words about. <clears throat> oh, I got a little bit of a cough here. Not, it it was fine until a minute ago. Um um. You know, I just wanted to say that although I I didn't know the the burgermeister at all. <laughs> I think that was his title. Um, he he, you know, he seems like he must have been quite a quite a great man. And you know, it's really a shame how he was just ripped apart so horribly. Uh, I you know, I don't want to get into that. Um, you know, I just want to say that he 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 really he he must have been loved by by so many. It's such a shame he's he's not here anymore. But. Um, Okay, that that that's you know that's all that's all I had to say. Um, you don't even need roll perception. Uh, Irene and Ismark both look at you, and they're kind of like more unsettled than they were before you started talking. Um, the rest of the Brovians didn't blink an eye; they just look pale faced. Um, the man in the bottom just looks so <laughs> so uncomfortable. Um, the man, the man in the bottom. The man. Oh, this the guy. Ones? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you see I'm their names? Look like... No. No. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me do this. I'll fix I that. Say the um the flowers, they were blooming and happy when I first saw them, but as they become more and more uncomfortable, they start to wilt back. And they kind of die a little bit more than they were before. Oh, God. I'm gonna. Can Pyre try to help, Corny? Here? Yeah. Oh, I, I kind of gave up already. <laughs> give me a give me a performance check. How do you how do you want to help him? I think what I just met Cornelius, but I I think he's getting a little nervous. What I think he was trying to say is the first people that we really met here were Eric, but Irina, Ismark, and what. The love that they showed towards the passing of their father warmed us. And we wanted to be here just to see, once again, all of you fine folk who reside here. And I'm sure that you all loved him too. And we just wanted to be part of this experience and really show our appreciation for your hospitality and grieve with you in this time that's hard. Thank you. They both... Give yourself an inspiration. That was perfect. Oh, um, thanks. They wow, both look at you. inspiration for my terrible performance. <laughs> no, no, you did make me laugh. Give yourself an inspiration. Um, <laughs> giving them out. Everybody gets one. I'm just kidding. I, I thought we Sarah, Cal, yeah, do. don't give yourself one. You didn't earn it. Um, <laughs> We'll go over the we'll go over the housekeeping notes in a couple minutes here. I gotta take a bio break, anyways. So as you say that, um, they both smile. They're a little bit more at ease. The um, both of them look to each other. They give each other a big hug, and they start. Um, they look at you. Irina speaks up. She says, "Well." I know that our love is strong and his mark's going to be a great burgomaster. He's going to lead this village into a new prosperity and he's going to do right by it. I myself, I'm going to oh, do a little bit better. I'm going to be stronger. going to be more resilient. And I know for a fact that as long as we're together, nothing can shake us. Tear rolls down my eye. My face. <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, you see the man come up and give Irina a hug. He, he says, Oh, lady! That was so beautiful! I still can't believe that sh your father left so soon. She, um, she looks back at him and she says, I know, Vasily, it's been it was too short. It's always too short. But it happens.
they are taking um, some letters, like pieces of paper, folding them up, putting them on the grave, and um, taking some of the candles and, and lighting them. Corny uh, and walks up to Vasily and says, Hey, I, I don't think we've met. The name's Corny. Oh, hey there, Corny. The name is Vasily von Holtz. It's so nice to meet you. Uh, nice, nice to meet you as well. I wish it was under more pleasant circumstances. Oh, yeah. It's... Unfortunately, um, it's vo his voice drops a little bit, but it's still kind of boisterous, so I don't know how much it helps. It says, death kind of happens a lot. Um, kind of get used to it. But once you've been here for a while, like me, kind of understand that. Does he look pale? Is he um, blue? You no no he's not blue. He looks. He had an olive skin at one point in time, but it's grown pa pretty pale. Like Does he some... looks similar to the Vistani, but paler. Um, he looks similar to somebody that you would have seen in Baldur's Gate. He looks like a normal human. But instead of more of a sun-kissed skin, he's been in winter season for a while. Okay. He needs himself a sunlamp. Where are you from, Vasily? Myself? Well, I was over on the Sword Coast for about... Uh, how old am I now? The seasons, they don't make sense here. Maybe 20 years? And then I came over to the wonderful land of Barovia by the mists. Ah, uh, you just... You know, you can't beat it for consistency in the weather, I'll say that. Uh, I mean, it's not all bad. You have some some great weather if you like being fucking poured on all the time. Or um, great wildlife research if you like... And he, he whispers, being turned apart by fucking wolves. But to me, I don't mind it. I'm still alive, still kicking. Okay. Um, during this conversation, are there people like at the grave currently, or is it... It's, it's just like it is on the map. Irina and Ismark are saying some things. They're basically doing what would be the formal part of a burial. And the Barovians down here, they don't really have, like, things for Barovians, so this is what they're going to be like. They're just standing there and staring. Are they saying anything? No. Um, I'm looking to see when they, like, walk away. Just okay. Just kind of keeping my eyes open. No perception right. check needed. They literally haven't moved since you got here. Make a history check. Uh, they haven't blinked since you got here. I hear go over to them. He just wants to introduce himself to them. Sure. Hi. I'm Tyre. Nice little town you guys have here. How, how did you know the deceased? Okay, good conversation. I'll walk back over to Fira. Like, over back by Fira, where I was originally. Vasily looks over at you and he says, You, uh, you lot are new here, aren't you? Yeah. I, typically, when you have a conversation with someone, you talk back, but... Now, don't, don't take offense to the rude temperament. Um, the Barovians are mistouched. Some people that are born here, that they're different. They just... Are they, like, unable to speak? They... They go through the motions. They eat, they sleep. They have children. 
They don't have dreams. They don't have feelings. They just exist. And you said they're they're mist touch. Don't you see their skin? Yeah, very blue. <laughs> but me, you my friend, we have some color. Yeah. Well, you more so than me, but yeah. Oh my friend. I don't think you'll get there, but maybe there's some magic or something that can help? I don't know. Rub some dirt on it. Yeah. Dad, you... All right. He, he oh. looks, looks over at the rest of you guys. He says, well, I'm going to talk to Irina before she leaves. I'll see you all in a bit. And he heads back over. Quick question. So, Irina, I'm there by like the body, correct? Yes. Okay. Hmm, the other guys are just kind of watching. Yep. Okay. I want to uh, walk over by Irina and Ismark and just listen in and see if there's anything I can do to help. As you do, um, Ismark and Irina say, uh, well, well, Ismark says, well, I really appreciate you guys uh, coming down. It's nice to, to, to have some people here, to have nice words said. It's going to be yeah. a lot to uh, take over, but I'll sleep easier knowing that Irina is going to be over in Vlaki. Yeah, so or should we leave, like, now, or? Irina turns to you and she says, uh, Oh, no, we, we have some time. I mean, we could go in the morning or next week or a couple weeks. Is Mark behind her is nodding his head furiously. Well, it seems like your brother agrees a couple weeks would be a good idea. <laughs> he... He is, is he, well, well wait, um, did he shake I his head or that, not his head? I, I think that's uh, a bit too long, Irina. Um, you know, I, I'm going to have my hands full here, and Velaki this time of season, is it's perfect. Hey, I, Irina, I couldn't help but admire your scarf. Is she, there anywhere I could get one like it? Well, she takes it and she holds it. This one was actually given to uh, a Vistani that traveled through town. Um, it was given to them by a mysterious benefactor, but it found its way towards me, so I don't, I don't know. It's very pretty, though, right? Oh, it it just really complements the the rest of the things you're wearing. Oh, I never you. I never took you for one for fashion. Oh, you know, I, I do prefer colorful outfits. It's, you know, it, it really helped in my past profession. To... She, yeah. she looks up at you and she says, oh, were you a bit of a mercantile? Yeah, yeah, you could say I, uh... well, no, no, you couldn't. Um... I, no, I, I wouldn't say I was a mercantile. It just helped, you know, if I could get people's attention and keep them, keep their eyes on me. You know, that God. brightly colored clothing helped with that. Town crier. It's a noble profession. You don't see older folk doing it much, though. Usually ends when you're young, but don't get down yeah. on yourself. You have to hold that with pride. Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't know there was a lot of crying going on, but, I, you know, I appreciate the, the words of wisdom here. She puts a full hand on your shoulder, and mind you, you're what, like six foot, seven foot? Sure. She uh, is let me see. full-ass tippy-toeing it up yeah, to your like shoulder. Six, five. She says, it's a good profession. And well, then she you know, went... <laughs> somebody's got to cry for the town. Um... She's saying this. Vasily is saying to her, uh, 
before they were saying, though, if you ever need anything, Irina, just come and find me. I'll be over in Velaki, so you can, um, you can let me know. And uh, he starts walking off. Arena says over to you guys, He's, uh, she says, Well, I can say this. He went a little too soon, but I trust that my future is going to be okay. I just have this weird feeling. Say, Arena, did, did your brother used to, like, be really, like, was he, like, bigger, or has he, like, lost weight or something? Why is that? I heard somebody call him Ismark the the Lesser earlier, oh. and I didn't know if that was, like, he, he um, used to be, um, like, more Courtney, than he was now. Courtney, let me, um, let me just, she pushes you aside. Um, that's a terrible nickname that my brother got. Oh, I, I thought maybe he lost a lot of weight, and they were... No. Was a remark on that. No, no, no. The whole joke there is that he won't amount to my father. He's uh, lesser than him, and the town is going to fall into turmoil because of it. Well, maybe the town needs to needs to do something about it on their own. You know, it can't be all on your brother. I I understand that, but what do you think the Barovians are going to do? She points over towards them. And, swear to God, have not blinked. Yeah, you know, it... Wait, aren't you Barovian? Yes, I am. But, I'm not... You're not blue by... like them, though. Yeah, I'm not. It happens to some of them, I don't know why. Can't understand. But, what I can say is that, uh... Those who are here... They don't add, well, they don't add a lot. So, we have to make it better ourselves. Nesmark's going to do a mighty fine job. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Now, I'll say this. I'm going to rest up a bit, and then I guess we're going to leave tomorrow. Is that fine, or do you need an extra day here? Um, as long as everybody else is okay with it, I'm fine with late in the morning. I, 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 like, I kind of want to get out of this place. Yeah, I'd like to see more of this area. Like, aside from as quaint as this town is, you know. Agreed. There's no reason to stay here. So. Yeah, I mean, we, we could even leave tonight. Well, probably, right? I mean, we should probably sleep. We might want to have some rest. We did have quite the day. Yes, um, it's not really a good this idea. Your father today. Yeah, it's not really a good idea to be traveling at night here in Barovia. But what I can say is that all of a sudden, her voice gets cut off. You guys see a green mist start to pool up, and voices start rising. Okay. Do we need to roll for initiative? That's not creepy at all. A slew of ethereal bodies start rising from the graves and walking towards everyone. That's where we're going to take a break. Because I really got to pee. Oh. Okay. okay. Back in a bit. Back in a bit, guys. Is that fine? Yeah. Okay. Thank God. It'd be pretty funny if we just left for like the town without Connor and Keanu's character. Um, trust me, dude. I have no idea what I'm gonna do next time. Like, literally, no idea. Well, Calvin's... I would just count on Connor never being like able to play. No, I don't think he's gonna make it to the start. I think he's gonna make it in like. I don't know, maybe a little bit towards the end of the next session, but we'll see. Okay, we'll take a break. I will uh, start the recording again. We'll wait for... Kel is actually coming on. Perfect. So yeah, I'm here, baby. Kel's um, always coming on to people. Ooh, <laughs> daddy. Um, a little did you bit get of... that on the recording? I did. I just started nice. recording again. Um, 
Strike little... that from the record. Okay, let me make the time mark. <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't care. Um, let's do a little bit of housekeeping from earlier. Um, rule changes. So I'm going to pop this up on your guys' screen again. These are just some of the rule changes that I made last time. Um, I want to repeat it to you, Kale, because it's important. So you guys are doing a great job at this. Try to be in character 50% of the time. Um, I'm going to try my hardest to not use you guys' real name and use a character name. If you really care about your character and you do not want them to die permanently, let me know. We'll talk about some options that you have to bring them back or um, have them come back in a different way. Um, you guys already nominated the banker, so that's good. We won't talk about how the coins get into each other's pockets. It's just assumed to happen. Um, let your backstory come out naturally. Just don't introduce yourself as your backstory beat is to avenge your dying parents after they got shot outside of a theater. Um, for hit points, once you guys level up, which is going to come very soon, you're going to roll for hit points. If you get a 1, you're going to re-roll. You're not going to take the average. This way you don't get horribly under hit pointed throughout the time. Um, we, already, we already ended up going over what happens when people miss. There's four of us here, that's more than half, so we're going to keep playing. This even means if we're going over something specific to your character, as much as it pains me, we will keep on playing through. So if you have to cancel, just cancel and tell me at least a day in advance. So that way I can balance some things. DM's rolls. Bro, you're um, trying not to do this campaign for three years? I know, right? I know. Um, <laughs> the DM rolls, insight rolls against NPCs are whispered. You'll whisper them to me, and then I'll tell you if you understand them or not. Um, group checks in general, if more than two people want to make the roll, we'll just do the average. Otherwise, we'll do average and, or sorry, advantage, or somebody takes the higher roll. Um, this is one thing that happened. Inspiration. If you guys think that somebody's giving out standing RP, just give it to them. We'll let two roll during the table at a time, and you have to use it before the end of the session. But hopefully this encourages you guys to RP more, and it also encourages you guys to recognize how epic you guys are. Um, insight versus, or sorry, insight versus persuasion or deception. If you guys want to tell if each other are bullshitting or not, you can make a insight roll. The other person will make either a perception or deception. They don't have to tell me what they're doing. They just roll and then give me the highest. Or they can whisper it. Um, either way, um, I will let them know if they won or not. And then they can say, well, I, like, you can describe it in action. No, I don't think you understood what I said. Or you really believe me saying this. Um, for combat it's still going to be bonus action healing potion for death saves we're doing a different system i'm going to roll the first one behind the screen and then the next two are going to be public so your friends can see them if you get a natural one on the first roll and then the next one's one i'll just tell you your character died um and then the rest is kind of specific for when people go down once the first person goes unconscious, I'll tell everybody about it, and we'll take it from there. Does that sound good? Yep. Cool. Yep. Try to make that as fast as possible, but I want to keep on reminding you guys. All right. So, Good as you question. all... Did any, of us, did any of us start with a healing potion? No. Or no one has any healing potions right now? Nobody okay. has one. Have you guys even taken damage yet? I did, but yeah. I with a lot of people. Yeah. I did some good healing. I Wait, just don't Aaron, stand... you didn't take that damage for that joke you made earlier? Oh, I, uh, that was psych, <laughs> that was mental damage. <laughs> you <Yeah>, mental. <laughs> it hurt my feelings. I'm not bully anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, as yeah, you... Stop trying to out me for still being at full health when AJ said I took damage. 
Don't be a narc, just, dude. It was such a bad joke. I just wanted you to feel bad. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Yeah, Jay, this is what's going to get your views. I know, I know, humor. I know. The spicy talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, So, catching everybody up, you all were standing around the crypt, or near to it, when, or the, sorry, the freshly tilled grave, when you started to hear rumbling of voices. Ethereal hands started to reach up from the ground, with a slow green mist rolling into view. As they are reaching up, they're starting to shamble towards you guys. What do you do? Can uh... I quickly crouch down and try to take a flower in one of the notes from the grave? Um, please. Are you trying to be... You say crouch down. What are you trying to do by crouching down? I'm trying to not... I'm, not, I'm trying not to let anybody see me. Okay, make a no, make a to, like, slight a hand check. Kind of act like, oh, I'm a little scared. I'm gonna crouch down. And okay, like... okay. So either up to you. Make a performance or a sleight of hand check. Either or. I have both of them, so we'll see. Oh. Okay, you stumble into the grave, just like how Corny did. You put your whole hand in the grave. You do have your hand on the letter, and the flower. Irina is just looking down at you at this moment. I'm just gonna stay there for a second, looking scared. Got it. Okay. Corny's gonna say, "Hey guys, uh, we should uh, leave. This doesn't seem right. Let's get out of here." Um. Irina looks at you and she says, "Oh, um, this is a frequent occurrence. Just um." Be sure to stand out of their way. The Brovians, oh, who were motionless for the entire ceremony, take one step back. Alright, I'm gonna mirror what they're doing and step farther away. Okay. Yeah, so, so we'll tire. As you do, the... Oh, sorry, I cut you off there. What were you saying? I was gonna say, when no one's looking at me, I try to just, like, stuff the letter and the flower in my pocket. Make another sleight of hand check. Irene is looking right... Let, wait, wait, wait. No, do you have no, a... no, Irene looked at him and said this happens often. So, so let's looking. let's do this. Let's do this. I have a d20 <laughs> in front of me. Okay, oh, so this no. is a d20. This is mo probably the most perfect for Curse of Straw d20 that exists. It has roses in it in silver. Oh, I'm going to roll this. Yeah, I made it. I'm going to roll this on top of this case. And this is going to be her um, perception check. So roll me a deception check. Okay, so a six. So her perception is a plus two. So she has to roll a four or lower. Yeah, I rolled a four. Hold so. on one second. Let me get an actual roll. So she rolled a nat twenty on the check. Hold on, let me tilt. Funny it. thing about AJ's, AJ's D twenty is, is there are twenty sides and they all say twenty on them. Okay, okay. You can't tell, but that's a twenty. <laughs> I put the fireball dice logo in the middle. It's a fucking twenty. She looks oh. down at you, or she she's not even looking down anymore. She's just looking across at you and saying, "Is there any reason that you want to take my last words to my father?" No, with you? no, it's just the flower. I wanted the flower. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take the, the letter. I'm so, I, I haven't seen anything beautiful here. And cool. I don't know if you know, but like I, I love plants. Do you want to make a perception or a dis or sorry, persuasion or deception check for that? Or is that yeah. your honest truth? Um, no, I'm definitely not being honest. I wanted the letter. Okay. Let's let's get okay. one of those. So either a persuasion or a deception? Yep. Well, if you're not being honest, what? it should definitely be deception. Oh my god, why am I rolling so bad? Okay, we'll give another insight roll. Yeah, it's a 12. Um, so, 
she looks over at you and she just disappointedly puts her hand out. Is this really that. going to be a thing? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know what's going on. I think the, the scary dead people scared me. She takes the flower off of it. She puts it in your hair. And she says, We all act funny at a time of mourning. Just ask me next time. And she and the, folds it up and puts it in her pocket. The flower like blooms in my hair. She Mixing. she gives a little smirk. As this is happening, the rest of you, you hear these ethereal forms start chanting. Strahd. Strahd. Do we Strahd. understand the word? Strahd. Oh. Strahd. 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 And they start walking away out of the cemetery. Does it increase in volume? Yes. It started as like chittering almost. Like uh uh like a vocal fry. As it increased, their motion, their activity also grew. Is anybody else chanting it? No, the Brovians are silent. Is Mark and Irina are silent. Is all right, so Corny kind of he kind of nudges Irina and he's like, "Should, should, should I chant this too? Should we join in?" Um. There's a a parade on some nights where ghosts go to fight Strahd, where Barovians have died trying to fight Strahd. You're. You won't gain anything by chanting with them, nor will they gain any solace. They always come back. They always fail. You guys don't like Strahd? Have you tried to leave? N no. Well, Strahd would make sure that you couldn't. He's the reason we're all here. He's the one. Who takes anguish well takes happiness in our anguish i don't even know if the fucker can feel happiness anymore but for fuck's sake he's the reason that we're all stuck here well why don't we just go ask him if we can leave <laughs> that'd be a well, I can't say that'd be a first. Doesn't usually end that well. He doesn't like jokes. He doesn't like Ooh. humor. I don't think we're going to be friends then. Well, we haven't even tried to leave yet. We just got here. Um, we don't even know. Maybe it, Maybe it won't be a problem for us. Well... I'll be right there next to you when you try to leave. I've tried it myself. Always ends up with me taking a long nap the next day, trying to heal up. Well, you all were speaking of leaving in the morning. Would you... Would it be all right if we traveled with you? I'd like it. I'd like it a lot. Um, it's always easier on the travel, talking with somebody on the way. She looks over at Fira talking to some new people that you don't know that well. She looks over at Pyre. Maybe just trying to understand people's feelings. And then looks back at you and says a company would be nice. Are you referencing me? Um, <laughs> no, not you, AJ. What? <laughs> <Hal>. <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> Have you seen my character? <laughs> I, mean, uh, hey, I mean, you're you're you've got a Willard vibe going on. Yeah. I was gonna say you you pull in the the ridiculously unpullable. Okay. <laughs> um, Pyre the unpullable. Well. This straw guy seems like a dick. 
He fucking Why? is. Why would he do something like that? Well, it just doesn't make any sense. There's all these stories about him. I don't know which are fabricated, which are real. But what I can say is, it's a fucking heartless monster. I don't. Sounds like it. I don't think in a million years, I could be anything like it. Well, I, I feel for the people here, but uh, until we know that we are one of them, I, I don't think our, our quarrel rests with this Strahd. I think we should attempt to leave in the morning and we'll go from there. Uh, you know, worst case, if we are unable to leave as well, then mayhaps we pay him a visit. Where are we taking you? Well... My brother thinks I'd be safe in Balaki. <laughs> Here, let's uh, let's must just be, take a second. I was gonna say it must it must be bent time. Here, let's take another five minutes. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, yep. that's cool. Hey, if you're oh, sticking around, I, I got a my ankle hurts from the fall of the stairs. Andrew, I got a question for you. AJ, Wait, if you got a what? minute. Uh, oh, Andrew, no. do you want to take five minutes? No, no, I was just giving him a hug. He's going okay. late. He had a lot of homework, so I just said good Oh, dude, him, so. sick. Yeah, teachers these days do assign too much homework. Um, yeah, Kel, especially in their school. Do you want to drop down, or do you want to chat about it here? Oh, it's, it, we can chat here. It's, it's just on my, um, my discipline right. points. I'm just not sure if I'm reading this correctly. Um, just ignore the house rules. Well, no, I copied it over from that play test. Okay, okay. But uh, let me, let me, so, da, 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 let me copy the, oh, shoot, what did I do? Let oh, are you talking about, like, the I'm... short rest thing? No, uh, it's the, um, the bit, so I have the flurry of blows. Let me, uh, it'll just be easier to copy from here. Okay. So, oh, that copied poorly. So, my understanding was that I can use a point to take one of the three actions, right? Flurry of yep. blows, patient defense, or step of the wind. But patient defense and step of the wind both say you can take blank yep. as a bonus action. Alternatively, you can spend a point yep. to take two actions. So does that so just mean I automatically it's... can take disengage as a bonus action without spending a point? Yes. So that's the whole thing that they made new in the new Unearthed Arcana. Um, you oh, basically okay. get it for free, or you can upgrade it. Gotcha. Okay. Just wanted to make sure because the whole like preface to this is spending the points. Yep. But yeah, then it's so... like, well, why would I spend it to just disengage if I'm already spending the point? I can disengage and dodge. Yep. Exactly. So gotcha. you, okay. uh, yeah, and we'll we'll get to that when we get to combat with you in it. Um, Aaron, the 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 UA shit that I applied to the barbarian was allowing reckless to be a reaction like it is in Baldur's Gate, because that makes way more sense. Reckless attack. Yeah. So you don't have to say yeah, I reckless beforehand. Anything. You can just say, I made this attack. Oh. I didn't hit. I want to do reckless. They did that in Baldur's Gate. Yep. Um, I think they did. It just makes a little bit more sense. And your rage lasts 10 minutes instead of 1 minute. Is that actually going to, like, matter? Yeah, you can use it outside of combat now. Okay. You can just be mad always. Exactly. Okay, so... Irina looks... Oh, sorry, is everybody ready? Sarah, are you ready or do you want to grab ice? Oh, no, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, okay. Wait, did you fall down your stairs, like, while we were playing this? Yeah, I went to the bathroom, and I was I was going down the stairs. I just completely... I was, like, saying in my head, don't fall down these stairs, and then I fell. Oh, <laughs> that's, no. how, that's how you get yourself. You psyched yourself out. <laughs> I fell down yesterday, so I was like, okay, like, let me not fall down these stairs. 
Just oh don't think God. about how your legs the work while you're walking. Yesterday was a different way of I fell down the stairs today, so I was like really trying not to do one thing, and so then I did another thing. <laughs> and stairs. So, <laughs> yeah. as you guys are sitting around the burial site, Arena looks to you and she says, well, me and Ismark here are going to going to find a place to rest. Um, we're probably going to go into the old mansion, but you're welcome to come spend the night in there. Otherwise, uh, Eric might be able to find you a room at the tavern. It's up to you. I wouldn't mind going into a mansion. Did the, the beasts that went after your father, are they likely to come back? Well, with you, um, I think they would think twice. But is Mark here and I, I think we can defend them. You see her, she grabs for a sword that's at her hip. Well, maybe it would be a good idea if we did spend the night, just make it easier in the morning, plan and get together. And, and if anything does happen, at least you'll have more numbers. Agreed. Excellent. Well, let's head on our way. As you guys start leaving for uh, Ver Varys, who did not see last time, you start to head towards a worn mansion, weather-worn mansion. You see, oh, here, let me read the green text really quick. Bob's Burgos. Bob's Burgos. Which sounds similar to um, that one comedian guy and family guy, and also that other guy in Archer. The main character sounds a lot like Barb Bob's Burgos. Um, I just know I have some green text here. A weary looking mansion squats behind a rusting iron fence. The iron fence are twisted and torn. The right gate lies cast aside. The left lazily swings in the wind. The stuttering squeal of clang as a gate repeats with mindless precision. Weeds choke the ground itself and press with menace upon the house. Yet, against the walls, the growth has been trampled down to create a path about the domain. Heavy claw marks have stripped the once beautiful finish of the walls, and they also bestow to black marks of fire that have assailed the mansion. Not a pane nor shard of glass stand in any window, and all the windows are barred with planks, each one marked with stains of an evil omen. Guys are going to get some nightmares. Very homey. Uh, you Aaron, know. you're blurry. You That's, know. Oh, his face like is a, doing like that penis. handsome thing again. It's looking too much like a penis. <laughs> um, so wait, just gonna mess it up for you now. Up? Now that you were recording, I'm gonna be just not in the right spot. No, no. I think I think if we all join, yeah, we're all in the right spot. We're fine. Yeah, it's just when people are joining in, I have to do musical chairs. Um, so you said you were talking about like sigils in the windows. Can I like make any of them out? Can I like check that? Make a uh, religion check for me. Yeah, baby. Okay, give me one second. Oh, let so... me know if you can hear that piano in the background, because that's going to fuck up your copyright. No, it's fine. I, I think the copyright's already screwed by this video that said it's copyright free, but I'm probably going to get it taken down with. Um, is that a humble brag about how good a piano Sam is? Dude, I'm, I, I want to well, hear this. Tell her I said that then, because uh, she doesn't think so, but she's working on a rearrangement of Mr. Greaves by the Pixies. I love it. Um, So... You see, with that religion, Jack, you can tell very honestly that it's signs of the Morning Lord. Um, 
it is a yeah morning lord it's a uh, a deity that you've heard of before but is not so frequent to your domain to where you're from do i know if it's a benevolent deity yes it is um okay. it seems like they're marks of protection yeah, so these are like wards and not something that was scrawled as a curse. Yep, exactly. As you guys walk up, I'm going to take you to the home screen because I don't actually have something for this. So we're going to theater of the mind it. Can everybody see all right? Yeah, we're supposed to be on our cards. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, on your cards or uh, around your cards, I'll move everybody in the center to j just make it easy. Okay. So as you guys walk into the mansion, it's almost reminiscent of the outside or representative of the outside. You see worn tiles, uh, cracked spaces, pieces of glittering sparkles on the floor near the walls and the windows in a layer of dirt on most of the floor Ismark goes up to you each and says well we have a couple guest rooms on the second floor the first floor is just the kitchen the dining room and something for um, the wait staff which hasn't been used in some time so if you don't mind we'll we'll head up towards the second floor can i like take a look around to see if i see any like struggle of like someone getting killed yeah um go ahead it's gonna be super low like go ahead and make a perception check but you got you basically have to get above a five um perception not oh, good. Ho okay, let's just take a second to appreciate that. That's two 23s, so two 19s. Um, you would have given it one more. I would have given you something else. So you see there was indeed a struggle. You can see where it started based on a trail of uh, haphazardly cleaned up blood towards where it ended. Where... It, it looks like somebody was tackled over and over into different furniture around this house. I can't believe now I roll good. <laughs> I really wanted that note. You guys ready? So ready. Good to go. Okay. So, as you all are being ushered towards the main floor what would you guys like to do or the second floor what would you guys like to do oh i did have one thing aj i took the eldritch sight invocation yep which allows me to cast detect magic without using spell slot um but does that mean that takes up one of my known spells um i don't know at this moment Aaron is nodding no, but he's stuffing his mouth. Yeah, no. I'm eating cheese balls. No, okay. it doesn't. It's just something you get. It doesn't take up a spell. Okay. okay. I would like to cast Detect Magic then. So, okay. known spells. I mean, those are spells you learn, like, every time, like, when you level up at certain times. Yep. So, as you detect magic. It should be obvious that you're doing this. There's like verbal or somatic components. Yeah. Like there's verbal and somatic. So just out of nowhere, you start casting a spell. And we well, how up. close? I guess you're pretty close, to everybody. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's just you're casting a spell. It's kind of obvious. Okay. Uh, Do you want to make it uh, like harder to notice? No. Okay. Because I think, I think we'll see how they respond, but he's doing it for a very specific reason. Got it. So yeah. So as you cast it, you uh, detect. Well, let's put it this way: 
you don't detect a object. You do detect that um, Fira is giving off some magic from her person. It's like emanating off of the flower that's in her hair and almost as on the ground as she touches it. But the rest of the house is, you don't get any pulses. You don't feel any shifting. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Just like that. Jazz hands. Um, that's, that's how he does it. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> what else would you guys like to do? I would like to go to Quiet. Well, Ismark, you can't give us a grand tour? Well, uh, how about let's do it in the morning? Okay. He just laid his father to rest. I think they might want some time. He, on that note, um, Irina and I, we're going to go have a chat. Sorry, he's not accented. Um, Irina and I, we're going to have a chat. Um, here's some of the guest rooms. You guys make yourself comfortable. There's some extra bedding and different things you can have access to. Um, I hope you guys are okay being close to each other, but we only have three. So he points you guys at the end of the hallway. It's a, um, it's kind of like a dorm hallway. You see the six rooms. Um, two of them are very obviously uh, more stayed in. You can see as you walk past, it looks like their rooms. The other two, or sorry, the other four are pretty barren, except for one being a master bedroom. But no one is hang out and talk and get to know each other. Uh, maybe uh, what time is it up? it's probably like eleven or twelve. Um, okay. Fira, maybe another night. Oh, no, I no, think. Sorry, I, I was assuming he left. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I'm talking to the three, three of us, four of us. Well, as much as I'd like, you know, to have a conversation with everyone, it is getting quite late. But maybe we do have a cart ride tomorrow. Do we know how long this uh, the ride is approximately, or did we not? Even, did they not even? Mention? You didn't even ask. Okay. Do we know we're gonna have a cart. You don't know. We didn't. Well, we didn't ask I've, enough questions. I'm sure we'll we'll be on the road for some time tomorrow. We can talk that, and I, I would like to get you to know you all better. Um, yeah. It seems like you all don't know each other much more than I know you. Um, but I don't know you guys' names. Oh, yeah. Right. Seeing as we're now traveling companions, I think uh, best get to know each other on the road. Do you guys think that maybe some of us should stay awake in case anything happens at the, during the night? Do you think there's that much danger? Well, I mean... Well, someone just got killed here. Yeah. That's true. And from what we've heard, they... From what we've heard, they might be after Irina. Uh, um, yes. Sure. You all didn't tell me about that. What what exactly happened to her father? We heard he was he was attacked by. We saw claw marks. It must have been wolves. Hmm. And we did encounter some wolves on our our original journey here. Did you did you see the wolves when you were brought in the carriage? I don't remember seeing much of anything, to be honest. Oh, you must have had a more uh, normal journey here than we did. Yeah. Well, I think... regardless, I don't think it's a bad idea for for one of us at least to keep watch. I can take the first watch. I'll I'll take the second. Third. How many do we need? It would only be... You could split up uh, two... I think it's two hours between eight. So it'd be okay. everybody taking two hours. 
I, I can take the last one. So, as you guys go down to sleep, let me show you what the um, hallway looks like, and maybe I'll even get fast enough to get a... Sorry, I can't do characters on that sheet. I'll get fast enough to do a room really quick. Let's do add a handout. We'll call this um, Burgo Mansion. <laughs> um, as you guys walk towards the hallways, it's really low lit. As you see it, it's uh, each of the lanterns that used to door the hallways are damp. Haven't been lit in, in years. Uh, you each, sorry, was there anything anybody wanted to do before they went to bed? Besides staying up for a watch? Nope. Okay. No, I think we're like, good. I'm going to put my flower somewhere that like won't get hurt. I'm okay. I'm really going to baby it. Okay. And maybe There's... some water, I'll like put in water. You don't find any water near the room that you're in. It seems pretty out of use. But what you do see is a nightstand. And, um... There is, like, uh, um, an empty uh, plate on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it on there. Um, I'll kind of look at the nightstand, too. I'm like, looking around, is there, like, a drawer or anything? Or Give me a perception like a check. Out. Yeah, with a 40... Hey, What's up? Oh, no, sorry, I... I... Go ahead. I would just want to ask a question about these pictures when you're done. Okay, sure. Um, so with a 14, you you get the sense that this room hasn't been used in years. You don't see anything personal left behind, but you also don't see a normal amount of wear like uh, a child would make or uh, a guest would make. Uh, okay. Varus, yeah. Yeah, I was I was just curious. Are, are these the pictures that actually came with the module, or did, no, did you AI I'm, these? I'm AIing them on the spot. Hey, cool. But I, I kind of figured because there's <laughs> weird lights coming out of the wall. But <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll see that a lot. <laughs> if you don't pay attention, they look really good. Yeah, I I close it as a glance. Um, okay. So first watch. Um. um oh. Before, I thought the light was just coming out of the crosses. <laughs> Before Pyre goes to sleep, he's going to pull out a little piece of old crusty bread and feed feed his mouth. Awesome. Well, just let's let's do this. Who is the first to go to sleep? Oh. Okay. No, you I'm, were? Going on. I'm the first watch. Sorry. I'm going to okay. pass out just immediately. Okay. So yeah, first... I'll sit down and meditate for a while. Okay. So first watch... Fira, everybody is winding down. You hear some rustling. You hear is Mark and Irina talking lightly. They both head towards the rooms, and you don't notice anything that strange. It's the end of your watch. You go over and you tap on the shoulder of who? That would be me. Yeah. Varys, you uh, give the exchange to Fira. You notice that everybody's quiet. Nobody's making any noise. Except, without even a roll, you notice a blue wing-tipped raven come sit on the windowsill outside your window. And I obviously recognize it from earlier. I, do I? Does it jog anything in my memory now? You remember it from earlier. Uh, if you That's want it. to make a animal handling or a history check, you can go for it. Um, beyond history, like, is there any symbolism like tied to it? Like, uh, anything I would know from my religious studies? You can absolutely make a religion check. I'll give it to you with advantage. You can most certainly remember there's no religious affinity tied towards this creature. 
Hmm. All right. Um, is the the window is it open or closed? It's closed. I'll I'll walk over towards it and like gently open it up so as not to startle the bird, and I'll I'll try to like hold my hand out to it. Okay. You open it up as you see the bird standing there. You also see behind it a woman in a blue dress. She's walking through the town of Barovia towards the Wine and Blood Tavern. You barely see... Well, make a perception check. You barely see her as she goes around the back of the tavern heading towards a uh, part of town that you guys haven't been in yet. The What you do see with that perception check this bird on its wing the specks that you see don't appear on each fiber of the wing they look splain across as if it wasn't made that way it was uh facaded that way okay Oh, so the so the bird isn't like on the windowsill. It's out in the distance somewhere. Nope, it's directly on the windowsill. As you open it up, it hasn't moved at all. It's just watching you. Okay. Okay. Um, putting together, so there's a blue spot on the bird and the woman in blue. Do I sense a connection between the two? Do you? Well, maybe. I'll I'll hold my hand out to the bird and and. See if it's friendly. Make uh make an animal handling check. It cocks its head slightly at you. And you hear it. And it looks down. Sorry, did you say I hear it? Yeah, you hear little little chirps. Did you uh, say it looks dumb? No, it looks down. Like towards the towards the street. Uh, I'll follow its gaze. Do I see anything down there? You see the woman. Uh huh. Um. Well, I'll kind of whisper to the bird and I'll say hello, little friend, and I'll offer it a little bit of rations from my pack. You see it acknowledge the food. It looks up at you. It looks at the food. It looks back at the woman. And then it flies away. Ah, well, see comfort in the night, friend. And I'll close the window and return to my watch. Uh, but, well, I'll stay at the window and keep an eye on this woman. See if I can suss out where she's going. Excellent. You see that she's heading towards uh, a side of town that you guys haven't been in. But as she gets farther and farther away from the Blood and Wine Tavern, there's not that much more light in the town. She disappears into the darkness. Hmm. Well, I'll remain by the window to keep my watch and, you know, occasionally glance out there to see if I can see anything. As you do, you see nothing for the rest of your watch. Who's the next watch? I believe that was me. Awesome. Uh, do you want to do me a favor and drop down in the chat for me really quick? Sure. Excellent. Okay. As you are preparing for your watch, you hear scratching coming from your backpack. Okay. Open it up. It's a little bit louder. It's your your furry friend is on your shoulder. You're not sure where the scratching is coming from. I'll dig through my backpack. Any indication where it's coming from? Thank you, Claire Bear. 
you notice that it's coming from your journal. Right. Forgot about. I'll open up my journal. In it, different from before, you do not see words. You see a face. You see a face being drawn in real time, sketched out in front of you, of a creature. A creature that is looking right at you. This is new. I've never seen that before, have I? It's always been... No, like right you don't even right. need to... Yeah, you don't even need to make a check. You've never seen anything like that. Do I recognize the creature face? You do not. You don't need what to is... make a roll. You've never seen anything like this. You can make a history check to see if you've heard of anything like this. Uh, sure. Whisper it to me really quick. Yeah. This is what the creature looks like. Hold on one second. Um, you can see it now. Was it a handout or is it? It's a handout. Oh, oh, jeez. You see the cut off of its head scribbled out onto the paper as like in, in the weird thing when you're looking at this you do not see a pencil hitting it from the journal itself coming up against the paper it's leaving an imprint or imprint almost seeping through the fibers from the underside the sketch is continuously drawing itself as you see smoke coming out from the entity's head. What might you be? I'm gonna quickly scribble on my journal. What do you write? Who are you? Who are you? Underneath its face you see more of its entity being zoomed out and filled in. Its arms are sitting there calmly, crossed at its chest. A small word written under its portrait signs power. Well, certainly looks like power. What kind of power? What kind of power is what I'm going to write? As you write it, it's... You write into it your quill, your pencil, your, your wax doesn't make a mark. It's starting to vanish as soon as it hits, as soon as it leaves. It's replacing your words as you're writing them, saying, you understand the power. Yeah. I understand it. Doesn't answer who you are. Well... You want me to observe his face starts nodding want me to observe and just what he well it scribbles Be ready. 
and a very lavish Y curves down beneath the bottom of the journal into air as you see a trail of smoke leave it. As it does, the top of the page begins to vanish. Be ready. Why? The journal's empty again. Oh, what have I gotten myself into? You can pop back up into the chat. Yep, close it, put it back in my backpack. Bear bear or something and just wreck shit while you still have a spell going on is pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't even look at the circle of stars. Oh yeah, stars is cool. As, oh, let me get my video going again. As you get like free spells and you get the, the other stuff. Um. As Pyre ends his watch, who does he tap on the shoulder? I think I'm last. Excellent. As you're starting your watch, you've never seen. You've never seen Alaska, so you don't know what it's like. As you're starting your watch, you notice that the start of a an overcast begins. There is no sun because it's always misty and dreary out. But it's almost like a sunset without light. The the warmth and brightness of light is obscured but you can see things a bit better there's no moon in the sky there's no chill or fog or mist in the wind it's starting to creep up over the horizon you hear a few footsteps in the rooms below Irina is walking around and making some conversation with Ismark I, uh, and this is at now the end of my watch, or it's just during yeah, it? it's towards the end. Okay. I will, uh, once, once my watch is over, I'll just kind of knock on the doors of the rest of the party members and wake them up before heading downstairs. Okay. As you do, everybody awakes. Okay, guys, give yourself a long rest. You earned it. All right, let me just go ahead and get all my health and, and all my stuff back that I totally used. Yep. And, oh, um... Excuse me, I didn't use anything. As a heads up for next time, you're going to level up to three. So we can take care of that at the next session. Um, we'll, we'll do a little bit of wrap-up here in the next ten minutes or so, and we'll have everybody roll hit dice, but we'll take care of that in a little bit. You want me um, just, can I just add all the? You want me to just add it all now? <clears throat> what What are you guys talking about? There's like Probably three. Not. If you feel confident, you can add it all now. Um, it's what, up like, to you. like if I don't think I need your help. Exactly. Oh yeah. I'll just I think that. barbarians, you don't get shit. So. I confident that I don't need your help. I got this. Got it. Okay. Ooh, get I get my primal path. Everybody here. Even including the people who have not joined? Yep. Gonna be? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna keep everybody at the same track, otherwise it's too complicated and kind of brutal. Oh, shoot. Did I decide a primal path? Oh, <sighs> well, whatever. Well, we'll keep going. I'll figure it out. So, as you guys wake up and head towards the bottom of the stairs, you notice Ismark and Irene are there. Ismark is looking at each of you and saying, well, he takes and jostles his hair. I have to say, um, you all are going to do great. You're going to be safe. And this is going to be for the best. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine anything could possibly go wrong. Uh, we, uh... 
we can certainly escort dear Irina here to her destination. Which will take us how long exactly? Oh, it's uh, almost, say, half a day's travel. Day, oh, if you run okay. into stuff. Well, put that in the air. <laughs> he does not look joking. Very serious. Um, as he <laughs> sorry, um, as he does this, Irina is like, uh, Irina looks over towards him. There's so much love in her eyes. She says, I know we're going to do great. I know that this group is the strongest that I've ever seen. Confidence. 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 Who needs confidence when you got skills? You, yeah. Good thing that we we have both in abundance. Both confidence and skills. That's and exactly I right. I have a flower yeah. to keep us happy. And we've got at least one powerful flower. In that, we have that. So, um, is there anything you, you lot would like to do before we head out of the village? You wouldn't is, there, are there like a, is there a store we can go to, like, get some stuff if we need it? Yeah, we could. Good question. We could well, go we... to the mercantile. <clears throat> We should probably go pick up our friend, Dew. Yeah? Yeah, where did he go? His brother, right? Alright. We could grab really anybody that you need. Oh, the well, more the merrier. Fire town. What was that? Well, we might as well just invite the entire town, then. Uh, Ismark looks over at you, looks down at his pouch, looks back up at you, and just nods. Um, I think that the, the adventures that we have in front of us, plus your friends, would do us greatly and You're not really bankrupt joking. the town. You're not really a joking person, are you? And I, like, kind of, like, nudge him a little bit. He gives a smirk <laughs> and just says, I, I think that I need to to balance an economy I don't think I've ever been in charge of something like this understandable understandable well I'd like to go to the store too add a little bit more gold yeah yeah I mean we could stock up on provisions well they have a couple things there, mostly for adventurers, mostly basic things. But, Irina, you just send them in and tell, well, tell Bildrath that I sent him. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And we'll, we'll take a big break there because that's perfect to end it instead of trying to introduce friends along the way because they probably will come up along the way uh awesome great job guys i really really think that you did really well there um glad that everybody's rping so good all right i didn't get to use my inspiration i know I still have it i'll just 